guys. Welcome back. This is Josh with the Financial Advisor Car Guy. This week I'm on vacation. I'm out in Hawaii and I want to walk you around my rental vehicle. Now, when I booked the rental, uh, I tried really, really hard to get the new Bronco and they're just not renting them yet. So I got stuck with the next best thing to a Jeep Wrangler. Um, I'm going to walk you around the outside of it. I'm going to show you some good, some bad, some things I like, some things I don't. And then just kind of wrap it up. Uh, we're going to keep it short and sweet this week, but here we go. So here we have kind of a tealish color Jeep Wrangler Unlimited Sport. It is a base model. They are all over the island. As you can see, I'm at Costco. We were just grabbing some food. Um, but I wanted to walk you guys around while we were in a parking lot. I had some space to kind of get, get out and about and around it and show you guys some of the cool Easter eggs that we've found uh, just in a couple of days of driving it. So the first one I wanted to show you guys is inside the headlight housing unit. If you look real closely, you can see the headlights and the grill are kind of built into the lamp. Kind of cool. We thought that was really neat. Um, you know, it's got not a lot of bells and whistles. Again, this is a sport model. Um, it's got like plastic latches, none of the metal, none of the good clasps. Uh, it's got some fake vents here. Yeah, I mean, just kind of looking around. No running boards, anything there, plastic flares. Uh, it's got the basic tail lights. Uh, it does have a backup camera, which is kind of an interesting feature. It's built into the spare tire. Not exactly sure how that removes to get to the spare, but I haven't really wanted to investigate that. Um, obviously standard suspension, standard wheels, disc brakes all around. So if we get inside, we'll start looking around at a couple of things. And being that it's a four door, you can see that the top does come off. Uh, this front section does come off and get removed. Uh, and then the back is one big solid piece, which can also come off. If we jump inside, you'll see it is a plastic dashboard. <laughs> Nothing to get too excited about. Um, it's got this tiny little screen. I mean, it's literally smaller than my cell phone, uh, but you know, no GPS or anything. It does have a compass. And then down here you can plug in um, your multimedia stuff. So you can use like an auxiliary cable or a USB cable to get your phone to sync. Um, you know, other than that, yeah, plastic dashboard, very primitive, nothing super fancy. They do a nice job though, because, you know, obviously the doors can get removed. So they've thought ahead and put the speakers up in the dash, which is great. Um, you know, there's no, the doors are so primitive. There's nothing to them. Um, there's one little wiring harness. In fact, I can show it to you right here. Um, I don't even see it. But basically there's just a pin that you pull. Oh yeah, the harness is here. So this just, oops, sorry, this gets disconnected. Um, and then, yeah, everything comes apart. It's pretty easy. And then you remove this nut um, and then the doors lift right off. So straightforward. But what I thought was really fascinating to me is that this is wide open. So here in Hawaii, they get a lot of rain. And I'm thinking to myself, if water is rushing off the roof through the rail, which here, let me step out and I'll show this to you. So the roof has kind of a rail here, okay? If it runs through the end of the rail and then down through this channel, where do you think all that water is gonna go? It's gonna go right underneath that fender. And so I think that's why they replace these things every couple of years is really because of rust, potential rust damage and whatnot. Um, but you know, no power, anything. The seats are super rugged, just kind of a vinyl cloth. Um, you get in here and a couple more Easter eggs I thought were pretty cool was the little tiny Jeep on the windshield, which you can kind of see right there. The little Jeep right here on the shift selector, um, kind of a throwback to the Willys stuff. And, you know, I would say the one feature that I hated the most and one thing that I, I really turned off every single time I drove it was the um, automatic killing of the engine. So if I come to a stop sign, the, the car would turn off. And then the moment I take my foot off the brake and put it on the accelerator, it starts back up. And while that would be okay in most cars, I found it incredibly annoying here. Um, so I, I disabled it every single time. Um, it did get over 20 miles a gallon. So it's really pretty economical from that standpoint. Um, what else? Kind of about it. You know, it rides pretty rough. It is a Jeep. Um, you know, again, no, no major frills or anything. It's pretty straightforward, right to the, cuts right to the chase. Um, I'll, I'll kind of divulge a little bit more 
as, as I learn, but I kind of wanted to give you this walk around again real fast while I had room in a parking lot. All right, guys, I just wanted to wrap up my thoughts on the Jeep. Um, I'm sitting here in the airport getting ready to fly home, so the week is done. I uh, just dropped it off at the rental booth, and it's all taken care of. So, final thoughts. Um, you know, Jeeps are kind of a, you kind of get what you expect, right? You can take it off-road. It's got all the rugged features and amenities that you'd want doesn't have a lot of creature comforts. As I said, it's very rugged, very kind of no frills. Um, doesn't have a lot going on for it from like a high class standard. Um, you know, it, it, it's, again, being it was a sport model, it doesn't have any bells or whistles, you know, uh, anymore. You can go buy a brand new Wrangler Rubicon. It's got full leather, heated seats, heated steering wheel, power everything. Um, you know, the upgraded suspension, V8, you name it, and you can, you can get it all. Um, this one was a very economical, very bare bones, very basic Jeep. And, you know, I wasn't extremely excited about the suspension. Um, I think that was one of the things that was the most frustrating thing. Uh, it's just, just incredibly jarring. You know, every speed bump you hit, every pothole you drive over, um, there was a lot of discomfort I'll put it that way you know my wife and kids complain that the rides rough um, you know and that's coming from people who ride in a Raptor daily so I mean that goes to show you know kind of how rugged this thing truly is um, I like it and I, I definitely think there's something to be said for a Jeep if I were to go buy one um, would I buy a Rubicon I don't I don't know that I would I kind of feel like I'd buy the base model I'd buy the sport model and then do my own wheels and tire package. I do my own suspension upgrades. I would do my own visual upgrades. You know, all the things that um, you're getting with the Rubicon package. Yeah, yeah, it's nice when it's from the factory. It's like buying an F-150 instead of a Raptor and saying I'd rather have an F-150 because I can do all that stuff on my own. Um, you know, I, I think that that, uh, that is kind of the same thing. Whereas I wanted the Raptor, so I bought the Raptor and I didn't have to do anything to the truck, it was done. Um, but a Jeep, it's different because I think Jeep culture is such that there's so much diversity, so much originality, so much, um, you know, individualism, right? Uh, you're not gonna see two Jeeps that are super, super identical. Everybody has their own two cents. So everybody wants to do their own thing. Some people go big lift, some people go small, some people go big tires, some people go wide tires, you know, whatever it is. And so there, there's a major, major discrepancy. If this lady almost fell down. Uh, big discrepancy there um, in, in what, what people want to do with them. And so, you know, buying a Jeep, a base Jeep is, it's not a bad thing because you can make it your own. Um, anyway all that to say it's it was a fun fun week we had a great time uh the truck was great it, it got us around it did pretty well i think mileage wise i think it averaged 21 or 20.7 or 20.8 something like that right shy of 21 miles a gallon um and it was fun it was great it had plenty of room uh we ended up not taking the top off at all which is unusual for us because last last trip when we came to hawaii um, we rented a four-door Jeep and the top was off most of the week, um, at least the front part of the top, you know, over the driver and passenger seat. Um, but that one didn't, that was even less frills. That, that didn't even have the little touchscreen um, infotainment center or whatever they call that thing. Um, but anyway, all is good. Uh, I appreciate you guys. Thanks for watching. It's going to be nice to go home. <laughs> Not looking forward to sitting in this airport for a couple more hours, but uh, that's the way it goes. So have a wonderful week. Until next time, may every investment you make be a good one.